As most of us know, actor Yulia Peresild, and I may be mispronouncing that, has recently arrived on the ISS to shoot a film. The very first film to be shot on the ISS, at least designed for fictional entertainment as opposed to a documentary. The Russians have beat Hollywood to the ISS. But in the meantime, in my opinion, something else is being completely neglected by Roscosmos, and this is really beginning to annoy me. Now, although the actress has gone through extensive training and is certainly qualified to at least go into space, she certainly is not a cosmonaut by any stretch of the imagination. And as a matter of fact, there is only one female cosmonaut who is still waiting for her turn to go to space and this should happen next year sometime, and this is Anna Kikina, the only woman, as I said before, who currently is in the Roscosmos program. All other female candidates have been rejected. Now, if you ask Anna, and she has been interviewed publicly, she claims that there is no sexism at Roscosmos, that it's simply a very, very rigorous process, and, quote, women always participate in the selection process. There are women who have always almost made it to the end, and it's usually for medical reasons that women are rejected. The medical criteria are very stringent, unquote. But sadly, although Anna has inspired a series of Barbie dolls, as you can see here, she has not gotten the opportunity to go to space yet. When she does, there will supposedly be a spacewalk opportunity for her as well. But in the meantime, she has to wait. However, given the circumstances at Roscosmos, she should count herself very lucky because this young woman from Novosibirsk is one of the four women who have had an opportunity to fly to space. Yes, only four since Valentina Tereshkova made her historic flight in 1963. What I find to be even more annoying is the fact that since the fall of the Soviet Union, only one woman, aside from Anna, has been se selected to go into space. One! What the hell is going on? Is the new Russia even more sexist than the Soviet Union? It would certainly appear so, and something absolutely has to be done about it. Granted, I'm not Russian, I have no vested interest in what happens over there, but as far as I'm concerned, Russia has one of the most important space programs on the planet. And excluding women from this program, unless they happen to be movie stars, of course, is completely unacceptable. My name is Jordan Wright. I was born in the same year that the human race took its first steps on the surface of another world, and then we promptly betrayed those people's legacy by never going back. But now, over half a century later, there's a new breed of pioneers that are seeking to finish what these people set out to do so long ago. But there is trouble as well. Something has to change. So it's time for commentators like me to stop being polite light and start getting angry. Valentina Tereshkova was perhaps the most unlikely candidate for a cosmonaut that one could think of. She was born to a peasant family in 1937. She worked at a textile factory when she was 18. However, when she was 22, she made her first parachute jump at a local aviation club. 
Since she had so much experience as a parachutist, this is what qualified her as a cosmonaut, at least as far as the Soviets were concerned. They wanted to put a woman into space before the United States could in order to present or depict the Soviet system as being more egalitarian than their capitalist rivals. And they certainly accomplished this. And being a parachutist was an extremely important thing because unlike the the American astronaut program, the Vostok space flights of the time required an ejection from the capsule at an altitude of 20,000 feet during re-entry. It was not an easy thing to re-enter Earth's atmosphere as a cosmonaut during this time, and yet she carried out her mission extremely well. Although many regard her mission as being a propaganda stunt, the Soviets really kept her up there for a very long time if that's all they had in mind. She was in orbit for two days, 22 hours and 50 minutes, and orbited the Earth 48 times, spending more time in space than all the American astronauts combined had spent in space prior to this date. She really did carry out a great deal during this time frame, and even discovered some aerosol levels in the atmosphere as a result of her photographs that had previously not been identified. She then jumped from the capsule at 20,000 feet during her re-entry and landed in Kazakhstan, having received a bruise on her nose, and then she had dinner with some local villagers who had helped her get out of her spacesuit. It was not an easy thing to be an astronaut in those days, landing with precision on the Earth's surface was just something that didn't happen at that time. But Tereshkova made it back safe and sound and was awarded Hero of the Soviet Union and later on the Order of Lenin from Nikita Khrushchev. And she went on to have a very impressive political career and remains part of the Russian Duma today under Putin's political party. So one would think that women would really be interested in becoming cosmonauts given the type of future that might be made available to them, because Tereshkova certainly was not the only woman to have a very impressive career following her time as a cosmonaut. And there were indeed other female cosmonauts in the Soviet space program who were supposed to fly, and then the program was dialed down and cancelled in 1969, and cosmonauts like Irina Solovyova never got the opportunity to live out their dream. In 1982, the Soviet women's cosmonaut program appeared to have been rejuvenated under the leadership of Svetlana Savitskaya, and she went to space not once, but twice, visiting Salyut 7 on both occasions. She also became the first woman in human history to perform an EVA and remains the only Russian woman to ever do this and was also supposed to lead an all-female crew back to Salyut 7. However, the station was decommissioned and by the time she had an opportunity to go to the Mir, she had become a mother in 1986 and this pretty much ended her career as a cosmonaut. However, she also racked up a tremendous tremendous number of accomplishments as a pilot. Unlike Valentina Tereshkova, Svetlana was a virtual sorceress in the cockpit, having racked up four records in 1974 in a MiG-21, these are FAI world records by the way, three more records in a MiG-21 in November of the same year, four more records in a MiG-25, which was the cutting edge of Soviet aviation technology at the time, another record in 1979 in the Yak-50, and two more records in 1981 behind the stick of a Yak-40K. She was an unbelievable pilot by anybody's estimations, 
and in 1970, she won an FAI World Aerobatic Championship with an all-female team. That's right, all of these competitions were against men. All of these records that she racked up before becoming a cosmonaut. Clearly, she could overcome any kind of sexist opinions that might have existed in the Soviet system at the time, and she wasn't the only woman to do so. In 1989, another promising young woman was accepted into the cosmonaut program and ended up going to space twice. This woman's name was Yelena Kondakova, and like Svetlana, she is also serving in the Russian government today. Now granted, by the time she actually went to space, the Soviet Union had fallen and the Russian Federation was now in charge, but nevertheless, it was the Soviet system that picked her to be a cosmonaut and was really responsible for her ascent to that lofty position in the first place. And like Svetlana, she went to space twice and she set quite an impressive record while at the Mir space station. During her time on the Mir, she spent five months in orbit, a time frame that was simply unheard of in those days for a woman. Granted, there were a few Soviet men who had accomplished that kind of endurance record, but no women had come anywhere close, and that rac record would remain unbroken for more than 10 years. Yelena was also a mission specialist on the space shuttle Atlantis during STS-84 in May of 1997, so she crossed over national boundaries as well. She really had an impressive career, spending more time in space than all Soviet women before her combined. Now, I haven't done the math, but I think she may have spent more time in orbit than all the American women had spent up to this time combined combined as well. Nevertheless, she had accomplished quite a lot, as had her predecessors. So things seemed to be looking up for Russian women. Granted, it wasn't a whole lot of missions, but they had four missions between 1982 and 1997 with a total amount of time in space well in excess of six months. Not too bad, but still they could do better, couldn't they? Couldn't they? No. Not just no, but hell no. The Russians would not allow another woman to go to space until September 25th, 2014. 17 years later. Her name was Yelena Serova, and granted, she did spend a lot of time in orbit, over 167 days, but nevertheless had only one mission during her career. And like her other compatriots, she is now in politics in the Russian Duma. Sarova says that she was definitely inspired by the female cosmonauts who came before her, especially Savitskaya. However, her background was very, very different. She was not a fighter pilot or anything along those lines, but an engineer and a scientist, indicating that the Russian space program was looking outside the military for candidates. This is a very encouraging development, but the fact of the matter is they basically stopped there is only one woman, as I said before, who's currently in the program and in training to go to space. One, and no prospects of any additional women being added in the future. And the fact that a Russian actress has a better chance of going to space than a female cosmonaut just indicates how bad things have gotten at Roscosmos and how little concern the Russian government seems to have for egalitarian points of view that the Soviet Union at least pretended to have in the past. And in my opinion, the most discouraging news as far as young women who want to become cosmonauts in Russia are concerned is a test that was carried out in November of 2015 where six female astronaut candidates would live in a mock spacecraft in Moscow for eight days to test out the physical and psychological effects of long-term spaceflight. They're supposed to be going to the moon in 2029, or so it was said. However, a number of the statements that were made by their male bosses were less than inspiring. 
For example, Igor Ushakov, the director of Moscow's Institute of Biomedical Problems, said, quote, I'd like to wish you a lack of conflicts, even though they say that in one kitchen, two housewives find it hard to live together, unquote. The Russian press continued to harass the candidates about how they were going to survive without makeup or without men, to which Daria Kosimarova responded, We are very beautiful without makeup. Those who will take part in an experiment are not concerned that there won't be any men in their crew. We are here to do our job and don't have time to think about men. They continued to be harassed about their hair, to which they replied sarcastically, I don't know how we'll survive without shampoo because in this situation, we really want to stay looking pretty. Now look, I'm not Russian, nor do I have any idea what it's like to be a Russian, or especially a Russian woman. However, I can say, I think with a great degree of certainty, that if I was a young Russian woman, I wouldn't feel very inspired to try to be a cosmonaut, nor think that it was very likely that it could happen. There have been 72 Soviet cosmonauts and 49 Russian cosmonauts in the entire history of the Russian space program, and only four of these have been women. If you had asked me back in 1983 who had the more egalitarian space program, I would have told you the Soviets, given the fact that they had already had two female cosmonauts at that point, and one of them had gone to space twice. However, since Sally Ride broke the U.S. gender barrier over 35 years ago, over 50 other American women have flown to space, as opposed to two Russian women, if you accept exclude the current actress who's flying right now. And that, by the way, Yelena Kondakova was chosen by the Soviet system and not the current Russian system. There is, seems to be very strong indications, very strong evidence to suggest that Russia is becoming more sexist instead of less sexist. And this simply is intolerable, especially at a time when we should be celebrating women in spaceflight instead of mourning what was a promising program 35 years ago. But there is one encouraging development. The current cosmonaut Anna Kikina, the only hope that women have in Russia at the moment to go to space, was actually ejected from the program in 2014 and then was reinstated after significant public outcry, suggesting that the Russian public at least wants to have one woman going to space, if not more. Hopefully, this indicates some kind of change in Russian philosophy. However, I'm going to believe it when I see it. In the meantime, I would encourage my Russian viewers, few though they may be, to ask their government to change their policies as far as cosmonauts are concerned. There is so much talent amongst Russian women, so much educational excellence that Roscosmos is simply missing out on a lot of talent that they could use to achieve their many goals, including going to the moon and beyond. It simply doesn't do any justice whatsoever to Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman to fly into space. If you like what I have to say, if you like the fact that I tend to be critical of things that I consider to be unjust no matter where they may be in the world of space flight, you know how to support me. It's all in the description. I could certainly use some help right now or a like and subscribe and I will be very happy. So until Roscosmos lives up to the legacy of these four amazing women who achieved so much for their space program and their country country, then I urge all of you to stay angry about space!